This week in science, we're talking about rats. And appropriately enough, we're in Vancouver, dubbed the rat infestation capital of British Columbia the last five years in a row. But what if we started thinking of these animals less like pests and more like allies? Human beings have been putting dogs to work for over a century now, from service jobs to herding to policing and security, even acting. And for the last couple of decades, a nonprofit called Apopo has been using similar training techniques to employ giant pouched rats. As legend has it, in 1995, Dutch product designer and rodent lover Bart Wietjens was looking for solutions to the global landmine problem when he stumbled across some research about using gerbils as scent detectors. He then thought, why not rats? They're cheap, they're widespread, they're intelligent, and... Rats have more genetic material allocated to olfaction than any other mammal species. They're extremely sensitive to smell. Moreover, they have the mechanisms to map all these smells and to communicate about it. Apopo now uses rats to detect landmines in countries across Africa and Asia. And you might be wondering, how do you get a rat to do what you want? We don't talk rats, but we have a clicker, a standard method for animal training, uh, which you see there. A clicker which makes a particular sound with which you can reinforce particular behaviors. If you learned about Pavlov's dog in school, it's a similar idea. You start by getting the rats to associate the click with a food reward, and then you start giving it test targets to sniff out. If they interact with the right targets in the right way, click reward, and the training builds from there. It takes about nine months to fully train a giant pouched rat, which are the best candidates for the job, in part because of their relatively long eight-year lifespan. Apopo also trains rats to sniff out tuberculosis. In sub-Saharan Africa, where healthcare can be hard to come by, the rats offer a quicker and cheaper way to diagnose TB early on, potentially saving lives. The company's latest initiative is Search and Rescue. The idea is to equip rodent rescuers with little backpacks and send them into the rubble of collapsed buildings where they can drop beacons near trapped survivors. Only six rats in the whole world are actually able to do that right now, but more are being trained as we speak. And the applications don't stop there. We could train rats to detect pollutants in soils, sniff out contraband in shipping containers, even uh, help diagnose diseases beyond tuberculosis. All you need is some specialized tools and a bit of patience. You may think this is about rats, this project, but in the end it is about people. It is about empowering vulnerable communities to tackle difficult, expensive and dangerous humanitarian detection tasks. And doing that with a local resource plenty available. With This Week in Science, Curtis Doring, City News.